Okay. I'm going to, uh, until we have a quorum where I can call to order, I'm going to call the meeting to attention at 6.32 p.m. And um, we won't be able to vote on our agenda or anything like that, but we will, in order just um, in the interest of time, move on um, to the things that don't require adopting, which is introductions. The first thing um, we're gonna do is introductions. Uh, this is not the time to make your presentation. This is not a presentation time. This is a um, just quick introduction of yourself. You can say what, what um, organization you're with, but we really wanna know who you are. Um, and, and if you're with an organization, do say that, but it's really more about you. Uh, just a very brief snippet uh, so that we know who's in the room because we find that especially um, in community work in general, arts and culture in particular, collaboration is key. So uh, when we know who's in the room, then we also know who we might be able to um, work with and whether we can offer resources or whether someone else might offer us resources. So I will start really quickly. My name is Daria Hardiman. I am co-chair of uh, arts and culture. I've been on community board um, eight years going into my ninth year. Thankfully, I was just reappointed. Um, I am a performing artist. I do Broadway, off-Broadway, commercials, TV, um, sing with bands, all of that. And I'm also a photographic photog uh, photographic artist. Um, uh, that's what I do for a living. And I have, did I say eight years? Yeah, I've been on the community board for eight years. Um, and when you are finished, I'm going to take us off so we can see each other. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can see each other. When you finish introducing yourself, you choose the next person. So I choose uh, Kumba. Good evening. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know why I knew you were going to do that, but <laughs> okay. So I am uh, here as a representative from Af for African Voices. I live in the Harlem community. I am a, a multidisciplinary artist. So I do many things as, as my name says, Kaumba means creativity and, and that's what I do, I create. Um, and I guess that's it until uh, it's time for presentations. <laughs> okay, who do you choose? Okay, I choose, uh, okay, let's bring some male energy in, uh, Walter. Walter. Good evening all, I am here. Good evening, my name is Walter T. Alexander, I am a, member of the arts and culture committee and also the artist information dis dis dissemination group uh been on the board since 2018 been a harlem resident mostly since birth harlem hospital whoop whoop um <laughs> i love the arts in harlem i not right now i haven't been doing anything uh as far as my voice but i plan to do something soon uh, and I'm going to speak to the, the uh, guest in the group tonight today to please put your information into the chat so we can add you to our artist information so we can disseminate you uh, grants, upcoming things in Harlem, and that's very important. Okay, thank you. And I will pick my good girlfriend, Tina. <clears throat> Tina, you're muted. Tina, you're muted. Gone it. I keep hitting unmute and it won't unmute. <laughs> <laughs> now we hear you. <laughs> I know none of you have ever experienced that before. It's only me. <laughs> um, my name is Tina Lumley. I'm a member of the Arts and Culture Committee. Um, I also am with Walter, part of the Arts information um, dissemination committee, subcommittee. 
I've been on the board since 2018 as well. You see, Walter and I are really twins. We just don't let everyone know it. <laughs> and I've, and um, I've been a Harlem resident since 2010. And I love um, the arts. I love arts in Harlem. And um, I think everyone here is because we want to serve. And with that, I pass to Jonathan. Jonathan's not here this evening. Well, that it would help if I would look to see who was here. All right, and I pass to Kelly. Kelly. Hi, everyone. Um, I haven't been in this board before, but my name is Kelly. Um, I'm here on behalf of Liz, if you guys know Liz Player uh, from the Harlem Chamber Players. But as for me, I'm um, a musician, a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, I play mainly upright bass and electric bass and a few others, and I sing. So that's um, what I do, as well as um, I'm the executive assistant to the Harlem Chamber Players. And if you guys are familiar with Tanya Leon, I also um, am her assistant as well. That's just what I do. Um, but it's great to be here. I'm happy to meet all of you guys. It's amazing to hear so much about the arts and culture um, in Harlem. I'm a previous Harlem resident, but I, I live in Queens right now. So I'm sorry that I've moved away. Um, I will pass the baton to PR. PR. Hello, everyone. Um, hello, okay, let me just get the uh, camera on. Uh, uh, my name is Pierre Voltaire. It says uh, Zoom unable to detect my camera, so I'll be no camera right now. I'm the uh, founder of the Harlem Public Arts Project. Um, I've been attending these meetings for, I guess, the past uh, five to six years. Um, I currently have a very interesting project going on on the West Side um, that's about uh, projection art. And it's right next to the cantina, uh, Skinny Cantina um, restaurant. If any of you are ever there on Tuesdays, you drop by on the wall by um, where Fairway used to be. I do tributes to different um, artists. Last week I did Nicholas Brothers. And of course I didn't miss out with a uh, tribute to Tina. And that's what I do. Great, who do you choose? Oh, who do I choose? Uh, oh, I, I, uh, let's see, Kelly. Kelly's spoken Kelly. already. Gwen? Yes. Hey, Gwen. Hey. Hey. <laughs> yes. Hi, everybody. Hi, Pierre. Hi. How's it going, Gwen? <laughs> um, Pierre is actually one of our partners, community partners. So, you know, he's awesome. And we really appreciate his involvement. Hi, everyone. I'm Gwen Black. I am a visual artist, but I'm also founder and producer for Arts and Jazz Fest New York City. We're celebrating our 20 years this year for the festival, whose mission is to celebrate the visual side of jazz through exhibitions, paintings, photography, quilt making, and more. And uh, it's my 35th year of really getting folks to look at the visual side of jazz. So we're happy to be here. Thank you. Who do you choose? Oh, let me see now. Let me see if I can see without my glasses. Let me see, guys. Did Carlton speak? Nope. Okay, I'll choose Carlton, if that's okay. Good evening. How are you doing? Good evening. Great. Um, I'm Carlton uh, Davis. Um, I'm the co-chair of um, Senior Issues Committee, and I'm also a member of Arts and Culture, and I've been joining all the new events that's been coming through that actually is new for me but it, it's it's been wonderful um two years now going on and um i'm still learning a lot on this side of the culture area and i'm hoping to learn more thank you thank you who do you choose to call to uh jonathan he's not here oh john is not here uh oh i don't know who's all on the list let me check uh, Barbara, Janae, I think it's Janae, Robin. Try Janae. Janae. 
She's not I, there. I, you may, do you is it Jana? Being myself, Jana? Jana, okay. So it's a y. Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Finland. That's why I have a weird name. <laughs> uh, so happy to be here. I'm uh, actually originally an OBGYN, uh, but I retired a few years ago. I, now I run the COTA Alliance, which is an organization for gender equality and women's empowerment. And a year ago, we relocated from Chelsea to um, 43 St. Nicholas Place in West Harlem. Um, so I'm not a resident of Harlem, but I'm very uh, interested in what's going on, of course, in Harlem, um, because we are there now uh, in a building which is really, uh, you know, dedicated to women, but arts is an important um, thing that we want to do, and we've already started doing some things, so um, I don't know if this is the, the place to advertise for a couple of events coming up, or do you want me to do that later in the agenda? Um, you're not on the agenda this evening. Um, oh, um, I sent an email earlier today, or was it yesterday? But maybe, maybe if you didn't get that, if I can just mention quickly, we have a Juneteenth uh, celebration on June fifteenth with C. Kelly Wright. We're doing jazz. Um, Kelly Wright of Harlem Late Night Jazz um, at our place, uh, and then uh, the other thing I would really wanted to get the word out is that we have a call for artists, for women artists from West Harlem to submit proposals for an event happening in October, an art exhibit for the whole month of October, um, which is going to be accompanied by some events as well. Um, so we have currently a call for artists out and we have, we're distributing postcards and we're on social media, etc. So any women artists from West Harlem um, that you know, please invite them to submit proposals. Could you please put this the information in the chat? Yeah, I'll do that. I'm, I'm and also, also share it with, go ahead, Tina. Okay, um, yeah. I just put my, my email in the chat, tlumley at hotmail.com. Walter, this is what Walter and I do. We disseminate information. So please Great. feel free to send that to us, to, to me directly, and I'll make sure that it gets out. Everyone that's here, that's um, in, a, in an art organization, please, as um, Walter has indicated before, indicate, put your name, your email address, the name of your organization, your telephone number. And we send out information as soon as we receive it because most of the time is pretty timely. Also, yes. if you hear of any type of grants or any other type of information that you wanna be proactive and help other artists as well, please let us know. We send out artistic information and opportunities. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Please add your name and your contact information, including email and phone number, if you're comfortable sharing your phone number. Um, and do put that in the chat, yes, please. Um, who yeah, do you sorry, choose? Sorry, I can't share my, my video, my camera is off for some reason. It's okay, Yana, who do you choose? Uh, we, have, we have Barbara, Ewan, Juan, Joanne, and Ilana left. Barbara. Okay, hello everybody. Hello. Uh, my name is Barbara Jones. I'm with the Harlem Swing Dance Society. We're the premier nonprofit organization preserving and protecting and propagating Lindy Hop culture, which started in Harlem. And things have been getting better with the help of the community and meeting people like you. So look forward to doing the presentation later. Thank you, Barbara. Who do you choose? We have Robin, Juan, Joanne, and Ilana. Robin. Hi, I'm Robin Williams. I'm the founder of the Uptown Dance Academy, where we transform youth into stars. Uh, I live in Community Board 9, and uh, we are having an event in Community Board 9. Uh, if you don't know much about the Uptown Dance Academy, for 28 years, we have been taking community youth and training them in our unique two technique that incorporates ballet, contemporary dance, and traditional Black dance. And they have gone on to become stars on Broadway, Alvin Ailey, to name a few. Nice meeting everybody. Thank you. Who do you choose, Juan, Joanne, Ilana? Ilana. 
Hi, Alana Mercado. I'm a member of uh, this committee. I was on a leave of absence, so I'm just playing catch up. Um, I'm also on the committee. And um, I have a visual arts background um, and I'm an attorney. Thank you, Alana. Uh, Juan or Joanne, who do you choose? I'll choose Juan, sorry. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Juan Colmenares. I'm a high school teacher in Harlem. I live in Harlem. I've been here yeah. since 1993, yeah, no, when most of you were three or four. And I love the arts, uh, painting, sculpture, architecture. Uh, that's my little bit. Bye bye. Uh, who's the last person? Joanne. Joanne, please do. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Joanne. Um, I was just interested in meeting new people in the community and meeting new opportunities. I'm with the company Perimeter Sports TV. Um, we're videographers and animators, and what we've been doing is going to high schools and like videographing their sport games and recording the other kids who's around who are also interested in either becoming videographers. And we wanted to just teach kids either during the summer or either during the school year who like actually can't play basketball, but like they're into arts or they're into the culture who would like to like pick up a camera and do videography and make cool edits. So I was just finding communities where, you know, other people are interested in, you know, ideas or any other fun ideas for the kids, um, like through the arts. And so this is my first meeting. So I was just like learning and thing about the community there. So. <laughs> Welcome. Thank oh, you. you weren't last. Actually, there's uh, you and Chen is last. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Joanne. Chen. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, everybody. Ewan, are you there? Hi. Hi. One, one second. <laughs> Hello. Thanks, uh, Daria. Um, I'm Ewan Chen. Um, I run the not for profit uh, Harlem One Stop, which is a culture portal for Harlem and for Manhattan. And um, I'm here to, if you haven't received our mailing, just to let people know that we are hosting the second uh, preservation conference up to, uptown. Um, this is a follow-up to the uh, preservation conference two, uh, three years ago, just, just uh, before uh, COVID uh, and the lockdown. And, um, it is scheduled for Saturday at City College. And although it's entitled uh, Historic Preservation Conference, it's looking at a number of issues which are timely and pertinent to this, to this uh, community, as well as other communities across the city. And those issues are housing, uh, cultural identity, uh, uh, um, retaining neighborhood character and um, all at the intersection of historic preservation and the arts and culture um, community and the importance of the arts and culture in, as an economic driver um, for Harlem. The tickets are free. It's a one-day conference, and there are tickets available. Um, uh, Can you put the information in the chat, please? Okay. Uh, it's on Eventbrite, and I'll put the link there. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so it looks like we have a quorum now. So I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6.51 uh, p.m. And um, we need to adopt the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt? Or Well, first of all, are there any um, changes that need to be made that uh, committee members? Okay. And is everyone here? I have... 
African Voices, um, uh, Kumba, I have Gwen Black, I have Robin Williams, Barbara, Barbara Jones, and Dakota Pippins on here. Was anyone else here expecting to present? The end. I usually don't do this at the meeting. You usually have to be on early. Um, however, this is our last meeting before we um, break for the summer. So I do not want to leave somebody, you know, out all summer. Was there anyone else that needed to um, present? And if you do, it, it will need to be extremely short. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Thank you, Walter. Is there a second? Second, Alana. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, we don't have minutes. We've done our introductions, announcements. Um, announcements, I just add this for every meeting just to kind of uh, this this may be preaching to the choir uh, or to uh, people who already know like you and and, and I know a lot of you know what we do but sometimes this is your only uh, time coming before the community board so I just like to take a moment to let you know who we are and what we do um, the community board is a um a group of appointed individuals appointed by um, the city council, um, city councilmen and um, more so the borough president's office. We are community members. We are all volunteer organization and we are sort of a, a advocacy watchdog, um, just a group of your neighbors who um, sort of speak to the issues of the community. Um, arts and culture, we try and bring together artists and organizations. We do our best to uh, disseminate information. We're very serious about uh, the um, sharing of opportunities and information and collaboration with artists, uh, with um, resources with elected officials and, and other things um, that we might need, such as the um, community benefits agreement. We try to put uh, whatever information we can gather in the hands of our community members. Uh, our contact information, if you have, um, we ask that you do get uh, put your information in the chat. I know this has been said, but sometimes it, you know, it, we just like to make sure it keeps being said. Your information, your uh, organization, if you're not with an organization, please put, uh, if you're an artist, what your art is or, you know, what, what your thing is um, and your uh, contact information, your email address and phone number please put that in the chat to be added to our dissemination um, uh, list. Also, if you have uh, resources yourself or you have auditions coming up or something like that, please also uh, give that to our dissemination subcommittee um, who is led by Tina and Walter, as they have said. Uh, also, if you want this blasted to the entire community, you can um, share it with our board office who will blast it out with, um, as they do with all pertinent information for the entire community. And that would be, what's Yutha's email address? I always need to get it. I think it's ePrints. Does anybody have Yutha's email address right off? Okay, we will share. If, we'll... it's, if, it, if it's shared with Walter and I, um, you, the, um, the youth's email 
and um, hockey, we, we also just, we all, they're included when we distribute information. Got it. So they won't need to, okay, got it. Um, the last thing, if you need a, anything directly from the committee, for instance, if you need a um, paperwork signed for, because you're a grantee, or if you need to get on our committee um, agenda or anything with this committee, please send that to, there are three emails, and I apologize that there are three, you need to send it to the arts um, dedicated email address, which is cb9arts, cb, the letter c, the letter b, number nine, a-r-t-s, cb9arts at yahoo.com, and please also cc both co-chairs, my at our personal emails mine is daria daria at yahoo.com d-a-r-i-a d-a-r-i-a at yahoo.com and jonathan dot synagub s-i-n-a-g-u-b number one at gmail.com and if you don't send to all three um sometimes you know there's a reason that we have th this is our fail safe um, way to, to make sure that you get answers and signatures and things like that. Okay, moving on, uh, we're going to do our committee reports. Our co-chair, Jonathan Senegub, is excused today, so we will skip the West Harlem Arts Alliance updates and also the Community Benefits Agreement updates. Um, so Excuse that, me, Daria. Yes. Um, I just want to inform you that um, I'm about to leave the meeting and I hope uh, I wish you a successful meeting and um, I'm going to make you host because I have made you co-host before. So I'm going to make okay. you host. I don't know if you would like uh, someone else on the, um, in the, within the committee to, no, to be co-host. No, that's fine. You can just All right. make me host. Thank you so much. Have okay. a good evening. Okay. Don't forget to record. I know you're recording, but you know, yeah. always got to Thank say, you. Don't forget to record. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. Okay, so um, we are on C, the Artist Information Dissemination uh, Subcommittee updates, Tina and Walter. Uh, as we are speaking, I am adding email addresses to the, our e-blast. Um, UN needed some information at one of the meetings and I uh, was able to help her because I didn't have it in particular, but someone in the e-blast had it. So this is how we communicate with each other. And we're going to present something doing new business regarding possibility of using funds to establish a, uh, a software so we can put everything into one place so it's a lot more cohesive. The e-blast is just for information on a quick basis, but the uh the hopefully with the, our our um funding that's available to the board will allow us to to have someone do establish a software program where we can really uh be a little bit more thorough with that anything you want to add tina no i just wanted to indicate that we sent out approximately 10 um, um, email blast last month of goings on in the Harlem area. And uh, when we get information, we try to send it out. And it's not a, a lot of op a lot of opportunity to um, receive information regarding to the regarding the arts. So we want to be a central place for knowing what's going on and be the heartbeat, so we can help every other artist and art organization within our community. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Walter. Is there any update on RKO? Unfortunately not. Uh, I went by there, actually it was on a bus, and I noticed that there were two retail establishments on the premises now. I spoke to Dan Cohen, who was the, um, the overall contact person. He was not aware of the two um, retail um, businesses that are now on the site. So I don't know how that is going to work into what we wanted to do. 
and uh, I, we, we're at a standstill right now. So, I mean, we're, it's still moving, but it's it's moving at a turtle's pace. Hopefully by September, we can have some real good um, updated information. I understand that the Metro down on 100th Street and Broadway has started to do their renovations. I'm not sure where their funding sources is or are. So I'm in contact with the person there as well. So maybe we can collaborate too to see what they're doing, maybe to be able to help us with our project. And that's okay. my update. Thank you. Um, just so you all know, anyone who is not aware of the RKO uh, project uh, at 146th Street and Broadway at the old RKO Theater, Hamilton Palace, um, RKO Theater. Um, the project has, this building is partially landmarked. It has been uh, bought and kind of sitting there for a while since the Hamilton Palace store closed over a decade ago. And um, we've been in sort of ongoing talks for several years at this point with the developers. They were very open to uh, suggestions from the community. Um, the community board, uh, maybe about at this point, I guess is what, three years ago? Um, it was maybe right before the pandemic. Um, actually had a meeting, a community meeting to ask community members and artists what they think would be good for the location. What we ended up sort of um, deciding on was something arts related. Um, the There is a landmarked um, theater in the building. The original theater is still there. Of course, it's in um, major disrepair. And so we were trying to see if we can get funding. We were trying to see um, what, what um, we could get that to be. Uh, the pandemic has greatly slowed this down. We're, you know, we've had people um, get on and off the community board. So um, we've we've just kind of lost track with some of the communications, but it is um, one of those things that we stay on because if we can uh, get this project in, um, no. in position, then it can really um, benefit the artists and arts organizations in the community. Ewan, did you have something to say? Okay, so moving on, uh, community updates. I don't see Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance here. So we're moving on to presentations. Our first presentation is African Voices, Kumba Ama. Okay, hello again. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. There's something wrong with my camera. I um, it's not working, so I don't know what the issue is. Okay, so I'm here to uh, represent African Voices, um, and give an update of some of the events that are going on. We wanted to um, extend an invitation to our family day that will be happening happening June 24th. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes to get an address as to where the location is. Okay, because Carolyn is out of town and she's sending me everything at the last minute. <laughs> so just trying to uh, get an update. Uh, that the location will be at the Harlem School of the Arts, as a matter of fact. And that's over on 145th Street and St. Nicholas Avenue. And um, from 1.30 to 5 p.m. So um, I'm assuming that everyone here has heard of African Voices. African Voices has been in the community for over 30 years. Um, they produce the Real Sisters Film Festival that happens every October. Um, they also, uh, do classes, in-school classes, uh, 
using art, poetry. Uh, we even partner with an architectural organization and uh, we match up art, architect and poetry, which has been a very interesting uh, collaboration. So also we have a magazine, African Voices. I'm sorry, my camera doesn't work, so <laughs> you can't see the magazine, but I'm sure- you share your screen. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know if you can, if that- If I can share. Anything. Okay, yes. yes cause we try to do this, the screen share and see if it might- Okay, if, let if me see. It might see. change yes. anything or help. <laughs> and, and the sound is dropping out a little bit. The sound um, is dropping. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm, at least on my end. Did you say art, music, and architecture? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I'll follow up with you on that offline. Okay. This is yeah, yes. Harlem One Stop. I, um, I've known about your organization for a while. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, so I'm just actually an artist that uh, works with African Voices. I'm here uh, on behalf of Carolyn Butts, who is the owner and founder of African Voices. She's in Amsterdam right now. So I'm just here as her representative, but you can follow up with me and uh, I will forward it on to her. Could you give us a little bit more information about your programming you're a grantee correct they're African voices you are um, presenting because you're a grantee from West Harlem um, Development Art Corporation yeah yes 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 so um, okay well I can only talk about my experiences with the organization I worked with uh, West Harlem Development Corporation they granted us a uh, I believe this was probably about four years ago, granted us a program of uh, what used to be the uh, Children's, Our Children's Foundation. In that building, the Harlem Development Corporation created a whole uh, summer camp. And we did a variety of workshops there that included uh, filmmaking, poetry, uh, art making, we had, a wonderful exhibition with the students. Uh, these were all high school students and um, I don't know, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thoughts. <laughs> so many African things. Voices? African Voices? Yes. Program? Okay. It was African Voices program, but uh, hosted by the West Harlem Development Corporation. Okay, and that was what that was this year, this past year, or when? Oh, this was uh, because uh, our Children's Foundation lost their funding uh, about three years ago. So it's about around that time that it, that it happened. So I don't know if you're familiar with it. our Children's Foundation. It was an organization that was in Harlem 45 years. They offered programming to youth throughout the city, all across New York City. Okay. Uh, so uh, the I reason see. the reason I ask is because the um, the presentation is about what how the monies were the recent monies were um, used, and I'm just curious what. Okay, um, so I'm going to try to share my screen because the recent money was used. We did a film program for. Uh, let me see. I'm going to try to do it. Uh, they had a presentation for Mother's Day. I don't know. Can there you we see go. it? Yes. All right. All right. So I'm just going to share a few minutes of, of this film presentation. Don't, I don't hear anything though. Mm, okay. Well, the sound is on. Can you hear it? Cannot. Do you want to give us a, I, I don't know how long it is, but can, do you want to give us a little um, narration? You want to let us know what we're looking at? Um, okay, so um, I'm sorry, I was not at the event, but this was a, a presentation of some film were tribute to mothers. 
And this happened on May 17th. I'm just trying to see where the theater is. I don't know if you can read. I don't know what you can see. Okay. I don't want to belabor the time if you if okay. you not able if we can't okay. hear it and you're not able to um to to narrate okay. it. Okay. Are you able to see it? Yes, we can see Does it. Does everyone but we see can't it? Hear it? Oh, okay. All right. So this is the panel, the panel that was uh, presenting the film. These are all filmmakers, and they were presenting their films, uh, uh, their tributes to mothers on this day. So you can't hear it. That doesn't, you know, it's no fun to look at it if you cannot hear it. <laughs> okay. All I'm right. Going to let that go. And the the other thing is the family day that I was talking about that was held on the twenty fourth. Okay. Thank you. The arts. You're welcome. Okay, so I don't know how to get out of here. And stop sharing. Okay. Um, so next we have Gwen Black with Arts and Jazz Fest NYC. Yeah, hi everybody. Good hi. to see you. Uh, sorry, Coon, but I was trying to send you a message when you share your screen. You got to click to the left, you got to click on sound for the sound to come through. Otherwise you won't hear the sound. So just a little bit of information for you next time. So hi everybody. Yeah, I am the founder of Arts and Jazz Fest New York City. Um, the, again, the mission of the festival is to celebrate the visual side of jazz. And this is our 20 plus, but I just put 20 because there was a couple of years that we, kind of just did very small stuff, but uh, we're celebrating 20 years. And um, this is my 35th year of really getting everyone to see that there's a visual side of jazz. And I'll share my screen because I have a flyer, Daria, uh, that will give more information on the funding that we receive from West Harlem Development Corporation. As part of the festival, um, we have, work to make sure that the community was involved with the festival and through special events like visual arts and jazz day which is now in the seventh year um, we encourage uh, the community especially our young people and people with disabilities to tap into their own artistic uh, abilities so let me share my screen um, am i able to share daria Oh, yes, I think hers. I'm not sure why this keeps coming up. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Let me share. And uh, let me see. Okay. Can everyone see it? Yep. Oh, great. So the event is taking place on Saturday, June 24th. Sorry, Kumba. <laughs> uh, I would love to be at you guys too, because um, you know I love Carolyn. Um, but we will be around the corner um, on Broadway at 137th and 138th in the newly renovated Monte Fury Square Park. It's an afternoon of intergenerational community arts and jazz celebrations. So. As everybody knows, with our festival, we have live music. Uh, we will have um, on the agenda, we're gonna be putting a new postcard out, which will have some of the performers. We're gonna have um, uh, Elizabeth Catless son, who's a musician. Um, oh boy, I'm trying to think of his first name. Um, Maura Catlett, and he has a group called uh, Afro Horns. He's gonna be performing. Um, we also will have Griot World. Um, with Sophia Loren Coffey, for those of you who know her, she's a wonderful vocalist. We're also going to have, um, let's see, um, there's a couple other artists that's pending, but we're going to have uh, Mr. Will and Miss Biddy. So, you know, it's an, as you guys can see from the pictures, we're going to be doing art making, puppet making, uh, jazz, and we invite uh, organizations who want to come out to the park on that day and set up a table 
and share information, no cost. Um, it's just a free event uh, for the community. And what I like about the Montefiore Park is it's right on Broadway, right at 137. When we did our Christmas caroling event a couple of years, two years ago, last year we didn't have the amplified sound, but this year we will have our amplified sound. But people walk by. So it, it, it's a really nice location um, to really keep building up the arts. So again, the, the time is from 12 to five. All ages are welcome. And again, um, my information is in the chat. So if you guys want to contact me, you want to come set up a table. Hi, Dakota. I hope you'll come out. Dakota Pippen, you know, he's another great partner and, and doing a lot of things to celebrate jazz. So if anyone has any questions, um, you know, feel free to ask me. And um, I'll put our website into the chat as well. You can go to our website. And, and importantly, we're having our fourth annual Jazz by the Water on Governor's Island. We're just waiting for some paperwork, but we're gonna have some really great jazz free on Governor's Island. Again, we invite people to come out, set up a table, share information, because it's a really, really big crowd that comes out to Governor's Island. And um, Joe Chambers, Dick Griffin, Ronnie Barrage, Jean G, Nikita White. I mean, all of these wonderful musicians are going to be performing. So, um, you know, feel free to contact me if you, you know, want to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Gwen, can you take a question? Walter has his hand up. Sure. You want me to stop sharing and I can see? Um... Oh, no, don't, don't stop yet. <laughs> That's the question. Okay. I love this flyer and I'm trying to um, add it because as you've been noticing, I've been e-blasting information that you've been adding uh, during this meeting. I can't seem to copy this um, flyer. I wanted to add it to my e-blast. Um, okay. Maybe you can email it to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I put my email is right there in the chat, xalex111 um, at gmail. If you can email it to me, I'll e-blast it out as soon as I get it. And okay. Thank and you, because you know I'm a jazz lover. I am a jazz oh, lover. Great. Thank you, Walter. This is the um this is the updated one because we had to add our fiscal conduit, which let me give a shout out, shout out to Yvonne Stafford with Sugar Hill Communications, it's been our fiscal conduit for over 10 years. And we really appreciate her. And um, as I was sharing with Peter and with other people, if you guys need a fiscal conduit, if you're an individual artist and you need to be able to have funds come through uh, an organization, we're open to that under Sugar Hill. So that's another resource for you guys. Um you know, because sometimes funders don't give to individual artists. You have to give to a 501c3 organization. But I'll upload this um, this flyer, Walter, for you in the chat. Um, if you still have problems, let me know. Well, if you, you can email it to me directly, I can send it right out. Okay. Okay. I mean, I can just... in, it's in the chat right above. Um, um, it's it's in the chat, Walter. Okay. So you you see it. Okay. I'll, Thank I'll send you. it right away. Thank you much. All right. Hey, Hope to see you there. Gwen. All right. Looking forward to see you there and meeting you were, in person. Were there any more questions for Gwen Black? Okay. Were there actually? I I forgot to ask for questions for Kumba Ama as well. Were there any questions for her? Okay. Then okay. we shall be moving on. Thank you so much, Gwen. Thank you. Um, our next presenter will be Robin Williams, Executive Artistic Director for Uptown Dance Academy. Lower left to unmute. That was your camera. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, yes, we're doing a black music. Music. Robin, you turned your. I'm sorry to interrupt you. You turned your video off now. I can hear you, but we can't see you anymore. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay. Can you see me now? Yeah, we're having yes, a black music presentation uh, at Aaron Davis Hall on June 9th. Uh, unfortunately, the tickets are sold out. Uh, but we are having a recital. Um, now, I am uh, funded by uh, WHCC, so I'm not sure what the uh, uh, the rules are, but we will have to have another show at, at during our recital, and our recital is outside of um, 
Community Board 9, it's at Symphony Space Auditorium. Uh, but we were presenting, uh, we were funded by uh, them to have this uh, event at Aaron Davis Hall on the 9th, but it, it is completely sold out. Our group will also be performing uh, uh, around town. We do Harlem Week. Uh, we will be uh, performing for Carmen Mathis at Marcus Garvey Park. Uh, we uh, definitely performed for the African Chorus. Chorus. We performed with them at Jackie Robinson Park. And again, what we do is we have a training system where uh, we combine uh, classical ballet with uh, certified acrobatics and traditional black dance. When you see us perform, you will see the classics from every different genre. And then the students from our school move on and they choose which career they would like, whether it be hip hop, ballet, Broadway, or whatever. And uh, we have a 28 year history of that. And uh, we've been performing throughout the uh, city for the last 28 years. Uh, so we are so happy to come to Community Board 9. We have a a big project that we're working on that we can't speak about in Community Board 9 also, but we'll be coming to you by the time uh, that we resume in the fall. Does anybody have any questions for me? We have postcards and oh, I might not, I don't wanna forget, we do a summer boot camp. Uh, our uh, boot camp will be on the east side of Harlem. Uh, but as, as, as everyone, as we told you in the beginning, our administrative offices are on Amsterdam Avenue and 130th Street. So uh, we would love for everyone to participate in any of the events that we are putting on for the summer. Does anybody have any questions? Do you have, do you have programming going on in Community Board 9 this in the foreseeable future? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, we definitely have an after school program here, but our uh, program is citywide. Okay, so we accept students uh, in our program from all over, including the Bronx. Uh, there are some children that come from Jersey, and those are the things that I didn't know whether I was able to talk about at Community Board 9. And we've actually been uh, with Community Board 9 since we started in 1996. We uh, worked with Mr. McLean. And uh, then we have, uh, oh my God, almost her, her name slipped my mind, but she was on the board for years. And uh, she was on our board too. So we have been in Community Board 9 for a very, very long time. Our school is 28 years old. And where are you located? Uh, we don't have our own facility currently. Um, we have classes uh, at Cultivate Studio, which is in East Harlem. Uh, we have classes at PS 129, which is on 130th. And we also uh, have our professional classes downtown. And that's only because we don't have our own facility, but we do our upcoming, uh, we're looking at something in Community Board 9. We just aren't able to talk about it yet, <laughs> but it's gonna be perfect. Okay, were there any questions for Robin and Uptown Dance Academy? Okay. Well, Thank you, you will see much. us all over town this summer. We do all the festivals and we've been doing them for the last 28 years. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, now we are at Harlem Swing Dance Society. Barbara Jones. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, no, I can't. Okay, sorry about that. It's but not the allowing Harlem, you to, or I'm sorry. I'm on this new tablet. It's a Chrome. I don't know what's going on. I, I can't even get to my downloads, my wow. files. So yeah. can't share. Anyway, um, the Harlem Swing Dance Society ha is a nonprofit, and we preserve, protect, and propagate Lindy Hop culture where it began in Harlem. 
you might say, well, why is that so important? You know, <laughs> well, um, it's a community staple. It's the one of the most famous dances to come out of America, come out of America or be spread throughout the world. Over a hundred years later, this dance is still being done. But the problem is when our youth go and Google it, they don't see themselves. They see white dancers pop up or they see the old pictures. They don't see what's happening right now. So that's our mission to get it alive and thriving back in the area and also honor those who did the dance, what became famous for it, and also danced at Harlem's famous ballrooms. Um, we do lessons in the community every Tuesday night at the Kennedy Center on 134th Street, that's at 7 p.m. Um, we also, the special thing that we're doing on Sunday, June 18th, we're having a free dance, social dance, where all types of music will be played in honor of Black History, Black Music Month. And that's going to be June 18th at 3 p.m. in Marcus Garvey Park at the stage. Um, also, we're very happy this summer to do summer day camp classes. Um, we're going to do them on Tuesdays or Wednesdays um, in the morning. There's also a fly around that. I'll have to send everybody that. But um, we want to go into the day camps and, again, introduce the culture to the youth. They're the ones who are going to be able to carry it on. We want to we want them to see that they can do this dance. They're capable of innovating in it. They're capable of doing it to today's music, not just the old fashioned music. So this is part of our mission and I'm glad to be here to share this information and I'll get flyers to everybody <laughs> through email. And I, you emailed me the, I was just trying to find the flyer as you were talking, you, you beat me. <laughs> um, yeah. You beat me the, 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 the summer swing and all of that. But yeah, if you would just, um, I can actually share this email that you sent me with all the flyers. Is there one particular one or? Well, the pictures had our mission, had the, the classes that we do Tuesday night and then also what's going on in the summer and on the 18th. Okay, okay. So it's what you've already talked about. I will, I'll forward this to you, um, Tina and Walter. Um, from Harlem Swing Dance Society. And if there's anything else that you want to share, Barbara, you can go ahead and forward that um, yourself as well. Okay. Okay. Were there any questions for Harlem Swing Dance Society? Okay. Um, Barbara, are you a grantee? Um, yes. Okay, great. So that's been a tremendous help. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and Dakota is not here. Are you, Dakota? Okay, then that, uh, that um, concludes our presentations. Um, we are going to move on with committee business. Um, the uh, old business is Harlem Arts Alliance um, update and Harlem Community Board Collaboration Project. Um, I put this on the agenda for last month and I just wanted to give the committee an update about what is going on with Harlem Arts Alliance. Harlem Arts Alliance is back. They've, uh, they were kind of dormant uh, since the pandemic and Voza Rivers, uh, met with all of the community board chairs uh, to discuss whether we thought that Harlem Arts Alliance was needed or not. Um, there was a meeting, um, sort of a targeted meeting held in May, which I attended, and then um, which was very well attended. And I think more people came than were actually expected because people were so happy to hear that Harlem Arts Alliance was back that people just came. Um, it was held at the Dwyer. Um, I, I told the committee about that uh, before it happened. 
um, the first sort of regular Harlem Arts Alliance meeting was um, held at, I should have written down the dates. Uh, was it last Monday? Might've been last Monday at um, Harlem. Robin, was it last Monday? I think two Mondays ago. Okay, maybe it was two months. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was at Harlem School of the Arts. It was well attended um, for to be starting back up. It was, you know, uh, Robin was there, Gwen was there, uh, all three community boards. What they're doing now actually is having um, all three Harlem community boards, we get to um, speak first and talk about our projects, what we're working on, you know, what we're, what we care about. Um, it is the intention of uh, VOZA to bring us all together because as I was talking about earlier in the meeting, collaboration is key, especially with us artists and the, you know, and funding and, and this, this New York, these new, this New York pricing and all of this stuff, uh, the more we work together, the better for all of us. And, you know, we, I, I was saying today that we don't stop being artists when we cross St. Nicholas Avenue, just because we go to community board 10, it doesn't stop. And whatever we are doing, we all, we want it to, we want it to reach across borders and, if we can't reach across the street to to the community board that's next to us, that's also in Harlem, you know, what are we doing? So uh, VOZA is sort of starting this initiative. It's one of those things that's so simple, it's profound because nobody's been doing it up until now. Uh, so I'm really excited to see how that is going to um play out uh he he actually wants to try and put together some sort of project that we can all do together uh one of the things he had sort of thrown out was this project that apparently back in the day when the um you know the the classic the people we know as classic musicians were running around harlem they used to do this thing where they get on the back of a truck and basically have a car, uh, a concert on the back of a truck, professional musicians. And in the summertime, they would just go and park it somewhere and pretty much perform. And, you know, a crowd would gather and they just, they provide this free concert for the community. And then when they were done, They'd ride the uh, truck to another neighborhood and do the same thing again. And it was one of those things that apparently was a uh, classic around Harlem that it was before my time, but it was something that the community, um, it was something to the community, for the community, by the community. Um, and so he was, we have been kicking around different ideas. We invite you all to uh, come to the Harlem Arts Alliance meetings. We also have the West Harlem Arts Alliance, which has been uh, created to serve particularly West Harlem. They are a brand new fledgling organization, um, and they're just they're they're basically just getting their set up. But um, these organizations are here to serve us, and uh, just wanted to give that. A quick update. Um, the next if thing. If people wanted more information, where would you suggest they go? Harlem Arts Alliance. Uh, well, it, to the was West. there a meeting with the West Harlem Arts Alliance? No, there was a it, meeting with Har this is Harlem. Harlem. Okay. Yes, this is Harlem Arts Alliance. And I think it's haa.org, but I will, that information I will get to you, Tina. And that, that'll be something good to disseminate because I don't want to give the wrong information. I don't have, um, I'm not sure of the website. And since I don't have a co-chair today, I can't take the time to go and look for it. Um, 
but I will get that information to you to get out to the community. Much appreciated. Uh-oh, you went on mute in the middle of your sentence, Tina. Much appreciated. Uh, okay, thank you. New business, uh, committee goals for the upcoming year. Um, this is something that um, Jonathan and I just pretty much wanted to discuss. Um, in the past, we've never done that before. And I was just thinking last month that um, it would be something to talk about. Um, we don't have to come up with anything hard right now um, in terms of we don't, it doesn't have to be set in stone, but I would like to just discuss some of uh, what we want to work on in the upcoming year. Uh, this is, since we have so many um, community members on as well, I am interested in hearing from the committee and um, if, if the community members also have any suggestions, I'm, I'm happy to hear as well. Anybody? I think I sent an email about this. If funding is available, which I think there is, and I'm not quite sure how much, some sort of repository for all of our information, especially um, uh, in, in emails and make it easier for the dissemination of information. And if they and it'd be one central place for some for people to both receive and send the information from. Yeah, that that's been something we've been working on. Work and I say working on in quotes. It you know ever since I see your hand, Gwen. Um, oh, I I just since I got on the board, um, I I was when I first got on the board, I had suggested can we have a Facebook page so we can have people at least know where to check in to get information. That was that was a no no. Um, we have. Uh, we did have our database, which pretty much because of how fast um, technology is moving, Barry, when he was a part of the Arts and Culture Committee, built the database, but God bless him, by the time he finished it, it was already kind of obsolete. Mm. Um, it did go on the website. Uh, but it's, I, I think just the entire technology is obsolete at this point. It's not even live on our, on the website anymore, because I don't think that it, you know, I just, I just think the technology is obsolete. Um, Tina, that is a, it, it's like the question of, of the ages for this, and it is so important. So definitely. Um, the our ne the next thing on the agenda is the the budgeting. So I that is something I, I definitely want to request. So thanks for bringing it up. Um, and and if anybody has any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Gwen, I see your hand, and then Walter after Gwen. Okay, yeah. Um, I was just thinking. Um, there is that kiosk, and I. I know some some years ago we kept asking uh, Mark Levine when he was uh, man, uh, when he was um, our city councilman that there was a need for us to have a space. So I'm glad to hear about the space moving forward on 146. But right there at the Monte Fury Park is a kiosk. It's empty. There's no activity. There's no information. It would be great if we could. Um, get together with maybe Shauna Brew and elected officials and say, hey, right here, right at 137th Street mm -hmm. is, can we, the arts community, utilize it? You know, even if it means finding funding to manpower it. Because mm -hmm. when you go to, you know, they have a nice big kiosk and 
all of the Broadway stuff, all of this and that, and that is right there. Right. And and it was built, but it's not it's not it's not even open and and not utilized. So that could be something that maybe could be helpful. That's a great idea, Gwen. That's a great. We'll mm -hmm. have to check in. We'll definitely have to check into that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. And speaking speaking of kiosks, it reminds me as well that just so you all know, and this is part of the dissemination, the you know the kiosks that they put up that replace the pay phones. With they have the the screens on them. Um, you can charge your phone there. You can actually make a phone call there. Yeah. Just so you all know, um, we as the community board are allowed to advertise on those kiosks, oh, those okay. electronic kiosks. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I guess, you know, perhaps Tina and Walter, we can talk about that as well um, in terms of um, using that because the we're allowed to use that free of charge. Uh, community members outside of the community board, I'm not sure what the rules are for that, uh, but I know that the community board is allowed to use those um, electronic kiosks. Um, Can I just add real quick, Daria? It's yes. $20, $25, I think, for a link. Uh, and, what is it called? Link New York City, you know, uh, kiosk. Yeah. It has information and it has the blast. Because I'm looking into it to, to you know, advertise um, June 24th. And I looked it's into link it before. NYC. And I think it started. Yeah, yeah link. Yeah, NYC. Okay, yeah. so they're charging $25. Okay. I think it for, was. For how long? For like a, a week or how long? Um, I've got to go back and look at the information because I want to move forward. Mm -hmm. But if I remember, it may, it may have been for a couple of weeks, I think, but I got to go back into my notes. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. And, and yeah, it was reasonable. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times. It has to be uh, approved. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, people that come to this committee um, and organizations that come to this committee, you know, I, in terms of approval, I don't know anybody that comes here that shouldn't be approved. Uh, so if you ever would, if you, you know, Gwen, you, for instance, if you have any issue getting approved, please do let us know so that we can help advocate for you. Um, Walter. Uh, Gwen, that that um, kiosk that's near the park is that uh, um, linked in with NY Link NYC? Yeah, because there's several on Broadway, and okay. there's right one on one thirty. I mean, one fortieth in Broadway, right up the street from where I live, and then there's several kind of dispersed along Broadway. But the kiosk near the park, which is a nice round uh, kind of like, how should I call it? gazebo yeah because like a gazebo yeah okay. yeah and it's empty so mm -hmm. i'm assuming it belongs to parks because it's on parks property right okay. well so what it, i what i wanted to input was that we had had unfortunately a former board member who put information about the COVID shots and stuff. So she's kind of versed as, as to what the process is with that. And I'm in contact with her. Uh, matter of fact, after this meeting today, I will send out an email or call her to see well, how do we link that up because that's a great idea. And my suggestion was since that we have those discretionary funds and we have access to either City College or Columbia University students, that might be a project for them to set up because I'm sure a lot of them are technically inclined to be able to set up that that site. So I'm I'm not sure what they would charge or if they would charge at all. But that's a suggestion because they they would be better um, equipped to be able to run that and update it or maybe give us the information how we can update it if the technology changes. So that's my input on as far as um, Tina's suggestion about using our discretionary funds since since we don't use them at all. So 
Thank you, Walter. I, I, I want to make a distinction, though, when we say kiosk, we were talking about two different kiosks. We we're talking about um, Gwen's original um, uh, suggestion was about uh, it's like a gazebo, like, a you know, it would maybe used to be a guard shack or information, you know, where somebody would sit there and um, it she's not talking about the electronic. We were, um, but then I was talking about the electronic separately. So we were talking about two different um, way. I, I mean, both. I, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with it. I, I'm gonna remember I take a look at it. But that that's yeah. Uh, I can't I can't yeah. think of where that is either. Quinn, is it on a court? Where is it exactly? So when you go right into the square, like you know the uptown number one train, the entrance. Yes. You yeah. Go down the train. It's right mm -hmm. across from there inside of the square so it's very very close to the sidewalk it, and That's like you on said the it's uptown a garden. side of the street on the uptown yeah. side okay yeah. the one that converted the street into that little um public area right yeah. okay okay so, so it's like yeah. in the park does it look like it's new was it built new or was it always there and they built around it uh, that was new when they renovated it and they finished it, uh, not last year, a year before, because mm -hmm. we did the holiday event there and we put our banner around it and all of that stuff. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just really um, disheartening that it's not being utilized, right. that it's just sitting there empty, you know, no guard, no, no. And I think they said it was supposed to be an information booth. Yeah, but with I, a guard. Yeah. yeah, it takes mm -hmm. the funding to pay somebody to sit mm -hmm. there, or maybe it just takes the community benefits agreement, like you know, like Walter was just saying, and maybe we can mm -hmm. figure out a way to activate that. So, mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. you for the You're suggestion. Welcome. Um, and Walter, uh, the when when they were setting that up and, and telling us we have permission, um, I will also look because they sent us an email to say how to do it. At the time we had to actually do it through someone at the borough president's office. Um, but yes, please bring us back that info and um, we can start uh, utilizing the linked NYC as well. Also, um, to um, because I'm on St. Nicholas, there are none on St. Nicholas, all the way from 125th all the way up. We are none, not one kiosk on St. Nicholas Avenue. So wow. I know and they're on Amsterdam and, and Broadway, but none on St. Nicholas. Yeah, Amsterdam, almost every corner there. Yeah, and Broadway too. I wonder why they did, didn't do St. Nicholas. That's a good question for Mina, Mina White. She should be able to, to look into that for us. Yeah, yeah. It'll be at our board, our general board meeting too. So yeah. Oh. Um, and okay, were there any more? Oh, uh, I'm 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 I did send minutes out last month. I'm not I matter of fact, you made some corrections on them. So I don't know if you if they went into the general package, but I did send the minutes out. Okay, thank you. We they just didn't come back, but thank you. Um that we're gonna have to make a packet of um several months of minutes to over the summer to um to the committee members and we'll just do we'll just vote then um so in terms of upcoming goals to me uh one of the things i, I kind of touched on when i was talking about the harlem arts alliance is i really am hoping to um kind of come together with the other community boards just in general. I don't know whether that means doing an actual project together, you know, with um, the Harlem Arts Alliance or whether that means, um, for instance, uh, Community Board 10 has their arts and culture meeting the same time as us. So um, even when I've thought about maybe I'll sit in on their meeting, we it's impossible however um i'll i of course with permission if this is oh, would be okay with the chair uh at some point perhaps we would even have a joint meeting to talk about you know the needs in harlem 
in general, as opposed to um, just, you know, staying as an island because we're not, we're all on the same island together. Um, that's just, and of course, like I said, I don't want to speak out a turn. That's just something that's crossed my mind um, about crossing borders. And it would have to be with permission from our chair, of course. Um, were there any more thoughts about goals? Okay, if not, the last thing would be funding requests. The discretionary funding, um, I found out, is for events specifically. It um, can't necessarily be used for uh, the info dissemination, Tina, but there may be some funding somewhere. So I really and that's want a hard and fast rule. That's what I was told because I was one of the things that I was talking about for discretionary funding. I was asking for cards for the community board because sometime, you know, going about our business and talking to people in the community and that sort of thing, introducing yourself. Sometimes it's easier when you're just some stranger walking up <laughs> to have a business card, it it gives you, um, it's an easier, uh, you're welcomed in a different kind of way. Um, and so I had brought that up in the executive board meeting and I was told that discretionary funds is for events. It's not for um, something like that. And why don't we do an event? But I mean, we could do an event. I at this point it's June, and when we were talking about it in May, they and it, I don't know if you noticed on the on the agenda, I actually changed it to funding requests because um, I'm not sure that the discretionary funds are even still available. Well, it's um, something that we could plan for, you know, the next next year. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we have someone who just gave an event that we can just get additional information from. Mr. Walter himself, he did an event for seniors. Absolutely. So, and an arts event would be great. And these and these wonderful artists and arts organizations that attend our meetings, I'm sure they would have a plethora of ideas. To table to to performances yeah, I, and yeah. providing artists <laughs> absolutely i agree so um you know i don't know if anybody has any thoughts right now but we do invite you you know as this is our last meeting of the season we are um june after june we have a, a summer hiatus for july and august and then we're back in september we invite you to consider, you know, what we could do together um, and all together and how we can, um, you know, what we need to ask for in terms of funding. The, the community board doesn't have a lot of money, but we do have resources, which is you and, and uh, elected officials. You know, we can close down a street a lot easier than any of anybody else can on their mm -hmm. own. So we can we can get um uh you know when people need permissions and that sort of thing that that's where we kind of come in and can be very helpful. So if you have a project that you've been thinking of doing and um perhaps you know when we come back in September we can talk about uh, making some of those, some of that happen. Uh, the uh, last. Oh, can I? Hi, I'm so oh, sorry to so interrupt. Funny. I cannot find my hand raise function. So I've been wanting to, I'm so sorry. 
Uh, okay. uh, but, um, we used to have an, an event um, when I first got on the board in like 2017, where we had it at Broadway Housing. And I know we used money um, for that. And it was like, a, we had like different panels. I don't remember the name of it, um, but I know you were there and there, we had different people come and speak. And I, I'm so sorry, like I, I just, my mind is like blank right now. And it was like, we would break out into different groups uh, to, about, you know, different like disciplinaries, like visual artists, music. Did, did anybody remember? Do you remember that, Daria? Of I don't course. remember the name of it, of but course. it was we changed so, the name a few so times. We could do we could do that again. Um, and now everything is kind of back in person, more or less. I mean, not really, but you know, it's we're heading back there now. So maybe we can do something, um, something like that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, just with getting like the word out, I put it in the chat because again, my hand raise function is not working, but um, just, you know, like a relationship with WKCR since it is in our jurisdiction, do they do like, um, you know, because they have that, they have a lot of great uh, radio shows on that channel. Like, do they ever do like um, advertisements or could they like do like a, like a spread the word for different events or for just, you know, the board in general, the arts, like, can they do that? I mean, do we have a relationship with anybody there? I yeah, know, but mm -hmm. go ahead, Gwen. Oh, I'm sorry. They do that, Ilana, but I don't know if a lot of the um, the radio hosts are back in person there at the station. Lamont Finner and Antoinette Montague, Jazz Woman to the Rescue. Um, there is a list of the radio hosts on on the on the website, but because of COVID, a lot of them started shut down or they have began to record from their, I mean, you know, broadcast from their homes. I think Lamont Finner is still broadcasting from his house. So you may want to look on the website, but um, we have been on a several programs, Antoinette and Lamont, and they do advertise. They, 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 they will have guests on and, and have, um, you know, uh, speakers and yeah. It's a good outlet. That's a good. That's a good idea, Ilana, to look back into it in, into the station. Yeah, and I um, I know in terms of advertising as well, uh, the the one thing that comes with uh, our volunteer work on the community board, our one little oomph that we that that I use sometimes when I need something is that that honorable before my name it's an it's a real <laughs> title just like a judge <laughs> honorable and i found that when um like with new york one and that sort of thing when we can advertise in that sort of way and they get back with you a lot quicker when you put honorable before your name <laughs> when it's from honorable so and so um mm -hmm. so um that's good stuff elana if anybody knows um if anybody has any contacts please let us know kumba i see your hand yes yes i was just um having a thought of, uh when you were talking about a way to uh give people your information what if you would put on the card uh events to be announced and then you have your information there would that kind of be like a put on where you know you were talking about making cards with your information but you were saying that the discretionary funds only allow for events so mm -hmm. i was just saying what if on the card or maybe on the back it said uh event to be announced Oh, I'm talking, these are business cards. I'm talking about business cards for community board members. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. those are um, the um. Are are you talking about more like a uh, um, cards that you pass out for like flyers? Well, you could do that, but it could be a business card, but it will have that notation will be on it. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You know, it doesn't have to uh, have a specific event, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it will uh, state that an event will happen. 
Or saying? maybe a link, Columba, a link yes. on the card. A saying. link, yeah, yeah. Something that just uh, would uh, give it the idea that you it's a, it's, it's a, a prelude to an event. Yeah. Yeah, you understand what I'm know. saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a matter of wording it so that, you know, if someone is looking at the card, it will still show that there is a, an event in progress. Okay. It's just an idea. It's just, you know, you can, you can hash it out and see uh, how, how you can do it, how you can word it so that it... Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that we, we our job is bigger than just events and right. events is the smallest part of our job so to put to make that a main thing on our business card I mean I guess that could be you know up to individuals if they wanted to do that but if we mm -hmm. did it through the through the board it, I'm I don't think that it would be um Right. Probably. Okay. Well, see, I didn't realize that you were talking about individual uh, business cards for each board member. Yes, I'm talking about. But this would be something. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the business cards are not difficult. You could, you know, set up one on the computer and just run it off at the board's office on cardstock. Do you want me to set up one for you and run it off? Uh. No, we we're that's something that's that's being discussed for the entire. Thank you, though. <laughs> thank you. But really. I mean, you know, um, um, once you have the template, everyone, uh, someone at the board office could just um, think that she's meaning something a little more official that yeah. would have. I am talking the, about an official business card. Yeah, I think, you know, the thing- What I'm saying is that you don't need a grant for that. It's something that administratively that could be handled at the board office. Right, you in the house. Your own business yeah. card. Yeah, unfortunately- board members and- Yeah, unfortunately, because we are a city agency, it things that are very simple like that, there's a lot of administration and permissions and things that have to- uh, go into it a lot a lot of times and uh the conversation was um definitely we can you know i could go do something on my own but the conversation was more about um speaking to just sort of the the need in general for okay. the entire board right. particularly um at least co-chairs and and committee subcommittee member uh leaders I guess um, that would have to come from uh, if Community Board 9 is going to have business cards, then it would have to be the same across the board. So then that would be a, okay. um, a, a Mark Levine question. Right. And then if he decides that it's necessary or it makes sense, then he would fund it. Yeah, well, no, it, it happened. It's it's a. It's a, it's actually a board thing. Um, there was a question of whether it's allowed or not. Community Board Ten has business cards. Well, then you guys should be able to get it. Just so, and yeah, you should, and and you yeah, should talk that to. Makes sense. That you yeah, should have you a should, business card. Right, and you should talk to Mark Levine's office. Yeah. So yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on that because that that's not um, really pertinent to the to the funding requests. I just brought that up because oh, okay. that's again, one of those things that because of the, you know, the political um, nature of what we do, simple things like that and simple things like being able to disseminate the information, whether we use social media or whatever, we're not even allowed to do. So it leaves a, even though it it has gotten so simple for the entire world of a 12 year old could literally handle this from their phone. Um, yeah. We're not I mean, allowed to, to do some, yeah. you know, some of those things. Community Board 10 does an excellent job and um, in getting information out there. Um, and so do you guys, but um, 
Um, but their communication is a lot more um, formal or professional. So they must have someone within, you know, on their staff who does that. Um, I've been asking Shatik about, I, I've been, you know, bending his ear about several things, including the business cards, because they, they, they have some things in place that actually some of the things that they have in place, though, um, from the feedback that I've gotten from our board is not, they're ahead of everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that some of the stuff that they've done without permission. Well, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to do that. You know? <laughs> well, sometimes you do. However, <laughs> not everyone is not everyone is um, willing to go outside of. Okay. of so that's where our hands get tied sometimes. So that's mm -hmm. why we're we spend half a meeting talking about something simple like how do we get this info out when we all right. know social media, you know what I mean? There's so many simple ways. Um, but we just I, we don't yeah. have permissions because Yeah, I, I, I don't understand it, but I don't want to prolong yeah. the, the the conversation. But yeah. I think I think they did the right thing. It's it's simple and doesn't have any negative impact no no matter how you look at it so so they're just um doing one what they're supposed to be doing and they've um you know they've created this 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 e e e um e blast so mm -hmm. i you know i think if you're wanting to do the same you should just follow their model I, we still have a, I still have a chair to answer to. Yeah. So, and they don't, All right. yeah. <laughs> so, no, the, <laughs> so there, therein lies the rub. Gwen, your hand. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to add and say the same thing. And I joined, I was co-chair of um, the arts committee going way back like 2001. And from that time, even up to now, email blasts, are done through Jasmine. Jasmine is dedicated to doing that. So you can submit your flyers to her and she will email it out. But the other cool thing that they do is it goes on their website. So people can download what they want. So there's a data, there's a some kind of database that's dedicated to community announcements. When you go to that computer, you and it gives you a whole list of everything that's gone into, that's going on in the community. So as you and this Ewing is saying, it's a good, a very good system that they have going. And they've been doing this since 2001. So no one has said anything to them. Agreed. You know? However, that's mm -hmm. not, that's their board office. Mm -hmm. That's how they run their board office. Right. And so we, our board office is run by very capable people that we can't tell mm -hmm. them how to do their thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we have to work a, in all of yeah, those. It's not a, yeah, it's not a thing of saying how to run it, but it's saying how can the community benefit from the CB9 calendar and website. You know, so it's not saying, you know, okay, you need to run it this way. No, but how can we all benefit from it, you know, yeah. uh, and make it more accessible and you don't have to, and, 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 and youth that doesn't have to spend all her time e-blasting e, e stuff out, you know, because sometimes people can go right to the, to the, um, the website and, and, and get information. Yeah, I'm a subscriber for CB10 too. I like the way they get down, um, but, mm -hmm. you know, Again, we you know they have a whole setup since way back, and we also have one since way back. And it's you know the the people on this side tend to they're doing what they do, and it's it's hard. It you know the the wheels of change move slowly, <laughs> yeah. so that's why yeah. we you know we just keep uh, we keep trying, we keep um, gathering yeah. information, and we. Uh, We'll see what we can do. Oh, um, 
So <laughs> is there any more new business? Okay, and no more old business? All right, well, we thank you all for being here. Anybody who, please um, save the chat, anyone who needs to save it, um, particularly the three emails for uh, co uh, Arts and Culture Committee, if you need uh, a signed um, attendance form, it needs to go to cb9arts, cb9arts at yahoo.com. And please also CC both co-chairs, Daria, Daria at yahoo.com, jonathan.synagub number one, jonathan.synagub1 at gmail.com in order to get your um, form signed and please do it sooner rather than later. Um, and with that said. I want that to Daria, one second, I forgot. Um, we'll be doing uh, an open street on 142nd um, between Amsterdam and Hamilton Place. So that's one block. When and where? What time and what day? Um, from on Fridays from two to eight thirty. I haven't started yet because we've been planning for the conference. But um, if I might have something uh, like a soft, you know, lunch on Friday because I promised the um, Lady of Lords School that uh, that I would do something for um, what is it? Um, Heritage, uh, uh, what is it? Um, Caribbean, uh, American, uh, or or immigrant month. So, um, but they're going to do most of the um, activation. And this is um, on your website, Ewan? No, it's, this is just happening, you know, this week as I, you know, um, uh, this unfolded this morning, so so I'm saying I'm I, I'm saying this uh, so you know that there is a block during the summer. If anyone on the this uh, this um, uh, meeting they want a place to advertise what they're doing or present any kind of program, arts program just you know uh reach out to me the opportunity is there whether it's so at harlemonestop.org right right we right. have to end the meeting okay. now yeah uh, yeah okay and thank you so much for and adding. it's the september 1st on fridays yes. okay there's okay. a lot of good information in the chat you are able to save the entire chat so i encourage you to do that once the meeting is over, I will leave it up for just a few minutes. So in case if you're unable to save it, you can just scroll through and get pertinent information off of it. Uh, but um, in the absence of anything else, we would just need a motion to adjourn. Oh, before you adjourn, uh, if you want to save the chat, if you look at the three dots at the bottom of the the chat thing, you can be able to save the whole chat there. Motion to close. Thank you, Walter. Is there a second? Second, Alana. Seconded by Alana. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are we are closed at 8.15 p.m. and oh, we love. will see you all in September. Have a wonderful summer. Thank you for coming. And Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. back, Alana. Yeah, thank, thank you, you everybody. Thank you. See you on the 24th. <laughs> oh, yes. Got you. Thank and you, Greg. I will leave I got to come see that kiosk, too. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the summer camps, the thank day you. camps with the Lindy Hop experience. It's free. Bye-bye. <laughs> yes. Barbara, I'm going to try to come to that. The 18th is definitely free, but for the youth in the summer, that's free for all the day camps. So they're going to book quick. Bye-bye. Amazing. Bye, Barbara. Bye, everyone.
Robin, you still copying stuff from the chat? Lower left. 